right I kind of got these degreased and uh, I've been using this emery cloth I started with something heavy it's pretty much what I expected would happen it's you can feel a little bit of pitting and it's not as bad as it looks more discoloration than anything but it, it is pitted uh, the top where the Torrington bearing goes that's actually smooth it's just stained so I just took some emery cloth I'm on the fine one now and just kind of worked my way down doing this I don't think I removed a lot of material uh, you know, I'm not killing it with a lot of pressure I'm just trying to smooth it out and clean it up and uh, I think it'll work fine after that this one's pretty much done that's more or less what this one looked like except this one just has these small bands of rust this one was top to bottom and again I'd replace them but I can't find any good used ones and they're just too expensive so I'm going to continue on with my effort to clean it up here and then we'll kind of lay this thing out and I'll give an explanation how it works and uh, we'll get it back together okay we're back at it today pretty sure we're going to finish this up everything's cleaned up I fixed it up as best I could with the emery cloth and wire brushes the inside of this ring gear it didn't didn't fare as well as everything else I think it'll work though I look, looked up a used one today it was like a hundred bucks I just didn't want to spend any more money on it um, I found one out of a 400 I think the ratio is the same it actually had the cage and the roller some guy just posted it and it looked to be in really good shape and it had the hubs I'm sorry that one was like 240 bucks so if you're looking for one there's one on there it's got the hubs cage with the rollers the ring gear it's out of a 400 and, I, and again I believe uh, they're the same other than that one has that big bearing on here this one doesn't it's got that red colored bushing there so I'm gonna start putting this back together it takes this demand drive fluid if you're ever not sure which one is which um, it says right on it for Hilliard clutches that's what this clutch system was called so we're gonna start putting this back together I'm pretty confident it'll work I mean this is kind of a hack job of a repair just because I don't want to spend a lot of money on it but I'll give you an idea how to get it apart and put it back together and how it works uh, I guess if I had to do it over again and it really mattered I'd probably try to find some more used parts or I don't know try to source something a little better but it's you know for the tenth time the parts are just insane what they charge for these and I'm not really too concerned these aren't bad but the inside of that the inside hub of the ring gear again it's I don't think it's all that smooth from the factory it feels like it's got lines like it's machined uh, the way you're looking at it here with vertical like a rifling I guess I'd call it I know it's not rifling that's the way to describe it but they're straight and maybe that's just to lock those rollers up in the sprag I don't know I'd have to compare it to a brand new one but they don't seem like uh, they're there caused by any kind of damage or anything like that so let me get into it here and get this put back together uh, and I'll just plug it in test everything out at least as much force as I can put to it by hand I think they'll give me a good idea how well it's gonna work so I'm gonna press some bearings on and get after it all right it's the last bearing to press on I figure I'd make it part of the video it's got this little pilot in it goes into the other hub so I'm gonna have to set up a little vise I have there to compensate for that or maybe I could just put the two plates together and it'll work and I'm sure like everybody else I've got a whole host of different size sockets I use just for pressing things that I don't think I've ever actually put on a ratchet yeah we'll be all right there this one happens to be an inch and three quarter which ironically I only bought to change the rear swing arm bushings on this very quad you could definitely tap these down with a hammer and if you threw the hubs in a freezer for an hour maybe and heated the bearing up even just a little they would probably drop right on and lock on there's not a lot of even taking them off there wasn't a lot of interference or resistance 
I'm not even all that worried about kind of hitting them crooked. They just go on that easy. for the bearings. My trusty old Harbor Freight press that I've had for at least 20 years. Still holding up. I'm going to try my best to explain this. First thing before I start, this is obviously the ring gear, the hub. Here's the new cage, the top and bottom for the cage. Uh, just real quick, when you're putting this together, and you put this in you could start it out put the rollers in and hold them in place and force it down but then what happens is the little bridge on the H clip right here it sticks out and that little bit of protrusion stops you right there and you'd have to go around and try to push these in it's really flimsy and uh, I think, you know, you could damage them pretty easily or bend them. You don't want to do that. Um, so an easier way of doing this is take the top and the bottom of the cage off. Drop it down in there and put the, where those bridges are, those protrusions, put them in the widest part where the rollers will ride. Just drop it in. And then if you turn it nice and slow, just use even pressure. Now they're where they need to be. And you can still put this together. You just pull it up a little bit. and no, I went too far. Then you just got to turn it back. Put it back in. And just spin it in there. Okay, and you're good to go. So the easiest way to do it is this way. Just drop them in. Put it nice and slow, start in the middle, and you kind of just lever them up. It'll slide in. Nice and easy. I'm going to take this back apart and kind of pre-lube everything, of course, for my final assembly. I'm just trying to demonstrate how this works. So you put those in, drop the top of the cage on, you're good to go. Just start sliding it back out. Now you're never... You're never going to get this thing to turn again the way you did to drop it back in, and I just made the mistake of pushing it too far. So now i got to start over. Um, I'm just going to pull it straight back out. And no, I did not do that on purpose as an example, but I guess I'm kind of glad it happened. So let's start over. Drop this in all the way. Turn it. When these are lined up there, you're good to go. Drop your rollers in. It's, it's not hard. Make sure you examine the inside. Look in here. Make sure none of those H-clips push through. You don't want that. They drop in fairly easy. Just kind of put the bottom in. Slide it in. That's it. Put the cap on it. Let's try not to make the same mistake twice here. I figure it's just about in the middle, so you can see there's a little cutout in here. You can see where that where that bridge is of that H clip. So it's probably about an eighth of an inch from the top now, and there's still more than enough room now to drop these in. And just take a good look inside. Make sure nothing's sticking in, everything looks uniform. Put the top back on it and just slide it in. Now this is the, the clutch side of the hub, of the ring gear. So this would go on here first, and then the axle hub, of course, right there. And there's a snap ring and a shim that go on here. So you'd have that in there, the other hub from the other side. And they're just loose in there now because, of course, these are outer races would be inside the case. And the Torrington bearing fits in there and it would snug everything up. So just for a demonstration of how this works. So when you're just going down the road, you're not in all-wheel drive. 
everything spins free. It's just turns. There's nothing, nothing holding it in there, nothing locking it up, nothing. It's just making noise again. It's not, it's supposed to sit in there loose like that inside the sprag or roller clutch. I don't know. Transmission guys tell me they're not the same thing on a roller clutch or a sprag. Um, one thing I will say is it'll only allow it to turn one way when it's locked in either direction. So if you're going forward, going in reverse, hence the two ramps, the ramped up side. So you have the widest part here, you get a ramp in that way, ramp in that way. When that roller, when this thing is locked and it forces that roller up the ramp, so to speak, it pinches these rollers in. When it pinches the rollers in, then this will no longer turn independent. Now, as you're going down the road, all this is spinning independent of each other. I'm pretty sure that there's no disconnect between the front and rear axle uh, in the gearbox. They're always locked together. I could be wrong about that, but uh, when I was taking this apart, and I've had it apart a bunch of times fixing different things, I was at a jack up the rear to spin the front. Um, so anyway, this is how it all is normal. All this does, it's such a simple design, it should be cheaper, but it isn't. So when the magnet applies, you hit that all-wheel drive switch, it uh, electrifies that or powers that electromagnet, it just grabs this, just like a clutch disc, and it turns it. And when you turn it, these rollers go up the ramps and pinch in. And when they do that, it locks that axle hub. You can see it won't fall out of there now, and you saw how loose it was. So you can turn it one direction, I can't turn that in the other direction. It's it's locked. So even though everything's well, basically smooth after cleaning it up for the condition it was in, but from the factory, I mean, perfectly smooth. Um, you can't turn it. It'll go in one direction, not the other. And of course, if you put it in reverse or start it backing up, it doesn't really matter if it's forward or reverse. The transmission doesn't matter uh, as far as how this functions. It only matters what direction you're going in. So if you start backing up, and this turns the other way. Same thing. I can't turn it now that way, but I can speed the other way. And again, you saw, you saw how loose, when that's off, how easily that falls out of there. When it's locked in there, it doesn't fall out when you loosen it up, comes right out. That's the idea behind it. It's that simple. And uh, it works. It works well. I said I've had it when the all-wheel drive worked. You had a hard time steering the thing. I mean, it really, it really locks it together. So, I'm going to Get the seals in the case. I'm gonna to try to figure out which side each one of these hubs goes in. Again, I don't think it matters. They look like they're the same size. And uh, get them in the case. I'm gonna put them in the case. They slide right in. You don't even have to press them. And then I'm gonna to try to just either get my caliper and measure and see which one of these seals puts the puts the sealing lip in a, just maybe a little bit different of a location for a better seal. Um, and it's pretty pretty easy after that, but. I'll start the video back up when I get to that point.